<clears throat> Hopefully you can hear me over the noise. Um, I've uh, been fortunate enough to have uh, Pocket sent me a second Pocket Pro uh, in order to do some videos and some content on uh, the multi-channel use of the Pocket Pro. You know, they didn't tell me what to say or anything, so I'm free to critique or evaluate as I see fit. Um, it's no secret that I'm a fan of the Pocket Pro, you can, if you've seen any of my other videos, but uh, uh, I'm uh, excited now to have two of these so I can do some multi-channel stuff. Uh, I wanted to do a, an example now. Uh, I've got a setup here where uh, this is this system's running at 208 uh, single phase on this. This is an ozone generator that uh, uh, I'm working on, but I just set up this uh, little test. Of what Basically what I'm doing is for a, uh, a fan, this squirrel cage fan up here, is uh, 208 volt. I've got it coming out of this circuit breaker. I put some uh, jumper leads out here so I can tie it in. Uh, I have my yellow Pocket Pro set for amperage, AC amps, and then my uh, orange Pocket Pro, the new one, I got it set for voltage. So I'm watching the single phase voltage, leg to leg, with the orange one, and then the other one's watching amperage. So uh, when we activate the circuit breaker, we'll be able to watch the, uh, uh, the amps and the volts. Uh, at the same time, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> Let me switch over. I'm connected to both of my Pocket Pros. Let me switch over to measure. Well, first, we'll do some or some multimeter stuff. Um, but what you can see here, you get a pointer. Um, number one channel I've got set for AC amps. So you can see current AC here. Um, I'll have an overlay of this on the video, but uh, you can see from the camera angle. Uh, channel 1 is the yellow one that is set for AC current and then if I switch over to channel 2 I got that one set for AC voltage and uh, you can only see one view at a time on the main screen but you can see the simultaneous voltages and amperages or whatever uh, whatever parameter you're reading. You can see both of those simultaneously down here below uh, on the two channels. And then if you have more channels, I'm guessing that it'll shrink those boxes so that you can get all four down there. Um, so let's go ahead and kick on the breaker. It'll turn this fan on, so it might get a little bit noisy. But we can watch the current and the amperage at the same time. So uh, right now we got 211.8 volts AC leg to leg on that branch. And then uh, we'll switch over to the amperage here. I can see the 0.25 amps that it's uh, of AC current that it's taken to run that fan. <clears throat> and of course you can also turn on your functions. I have them on right now, but you've got a minimum and a maximum functions to see the min-max um, in case there was any uh, inrush or whatever current, you can see that. <clears throat> so so multi-channel multimeter is pretty nice. You can see both the things. Now if you got those together, and then you can figure out wattage and everything on that. Um, now, let's switch that off to get rid of the noise. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, data logger function. So one feature I would like to see on the data log is the ability to hit the start button down here, the circle. If you could hit that start button and start all channels simultaneously, that would be cool. Uh, as it is now, you've got to start each one separately, which is not a terrible problem because you can start them pretty quick. And the maximum data log time is half second. You can switch between channels and start each one uh, pretty rapidly, you know. So basically, you, you might miss a frame or two on that. But uh, let me get them both set up here. <clears throat> so let me go to mode. I'm on channel one. You can see up here at the top, so channel one. Uh, we're looking at AC amperage. And we're only running, uh, what was that amperage? 250 milliamps or something. So let's uh, switch this to a... I don't know, 100 milliamps per division, and we'll do 500 milliseconds. So every half second, we'll do a, a, a sample. Now let's switch over to channel two. And then this one is set for, uh, let's set it for AC voltage. Now this is 200 volts, so we don't want to, we got to get a, let's do like 100 volts per division. Also 500 milliseconds. So what I'm going to do here is get this started before I actually hit power, and then I'll be able to see that inrush of power. So uh, what I'm going to do is hit the start for channel one, and then I'll switch over to channel two real quick, and I'll hit start again 
to get both channels running. So start, start. Okay, so now I should be able to toggle back and forth between both channels, and you can see both uh, channels are data logging. Now let's hit the uh, breaker. So our uh, voltage, you can see our voltage at 100, mil 100 volts per division. We went up one 200 volts, just, just a little bit over 200 volts. Now we switch over to the current. So there, you can see that inrush when we first turned it on. So that's pretty neat. Uh, I'll hit the fit button to fit it to the screen. And then we could come over here and take a look at that. Uh, that spike. So there's that inrush. So we went up to 316 milliamps on startup, and then it settled down to 250 milliamps. <clears throat> and we can get it even better on the oscilloscope. We'll try that in a bit, but uh, there was an odd little uh, blip in it after it got running too, where it dropped down. So that's how you can do the data log. Certainly good enough for most applications where you need to data log uh, multiple values simultaneously. <clears throat> so I can put my finger there. So yeah, you can see down here at the bottom, 212 volts. And then we could switch that off and you'll be able to see that drop off again. So there's our voltage, current. interesting that it seems to be reading 55 milliamps nothing's even on and then what you would want to do you could uh, save this and then export that information via CSV file so I'm going to stop that data log stop that data log so now they're both stopped uh, and I think I'm gonna have to save them both separately so there's the channel 2 saved switch over to channel 1 save that one now, if I pull up the history, it should tell me what channel. Yeah, so you can see the top one here, channel one, that was the, uh, and that tells you the amperage range, and then uh, channel two, 600 volts AC. So each of those um, data logs is saved in a separate file, so you would have to import those into uh, <clears throat> Excel or some other, uh, CSV editor, and then you could combine that data together to make a graph and you know, do some calculations on power or whatnot. Okay, so now let's switch over to uh, oscilloscope mode. So channel one, amperage. Let's do uh, With 50 milliamps per division, AC amps, 20 milliseconds. Now we'll switch over to the voltage. We'll set that one up. For that, we need uh, 100 volts per division, AC voltage, also 20 milliseconds. Trigger, let's do a, uh, a one time rising trigger on channel 2 so that it'll turn on. A, as soon as we get the voltage kicks on, we'll be able to see that, uh, that value. Now, on the oscilloscope, they do both start simultaneously, so it doesn't matter which channel you have it on. So we'll start the, uh, I don't know, I jumped over there. Because this is where you're gonna see the first year. It's not captured anything yet because I haven't uh, hit the trigger point yet. So let's turn on the voltage here and uh, we should get a snapshot of that inrush. Hmm, actually turned it off. All right, 
So channel one's exceeding our. Let's go back to channel one. Let's go to 100 milliamps per division. Try that again. See if we can get a better form here. Uh, let's. Speed up the 10 milliseconds. All right, get another sample. Yeah, so you can see the current comes in just ahead of the voltage. And we should have some of our uh, functions turned on here. RMS voltage, amps, peak to peak frequency. Now uh, let's turn on a few things. Yeah, so my RMS voltage 212, peak to peak 593 volts. 59.38 hertz, so that's line frequency. Okay. So let's use the, uh, we'll use the channel one amperage as the trigger so that we can uh, try to get the inrush See if we can capture that. Turn that back off. Start our oscilloscope. Now we'll turn it on. We should be able to get an inrush. There we go. Yeah, it went a little bit high. You can kind of see. I don't know if we'll be able to. See that uh, kind of an ugly looking signal when it first turns it on, but uh, then it smooths out pretty quick. All right, so let me rewire this and I'll set them up to watch both phases at the same time. We'll be able to see the two sine waves uh, offset. So let's take a look at that. So, you need to set up the, both of them as voltage. You want to make sure that you do that before you rewire anything. If you leave something set for voltage and then you hook it up, or excuse me, set it up for amps and you hook it up to voltage, you're just going to smoke the meter. So, let's see, let's switch over to. Uh, multimeter mode just to make sure that I got this reading what I'm expecting. Okay, so we'll put volts AC. They should both be on volts AC. And they are. Okay. Volts, volts. All right, let's turn this on and see what kind of, make sure I see the voltage. All right. So there's my two legs. Okay. Now let's uh, switch over to oscilloscope mode. <clears throat> turn on both channels. So you can see when you touch the, the channel, you can actually turn that channel on or off. You switch to it with one press, push it again, you turn it off. So if I don't want the channel on, I would just touch it again. So let's put both of these channels on volts AC. We'll do 100, or 100 volts per division. Volts AC, 10 milliseconds. We'll try that, see what it looks like. Make sure this is on the same AC volts. Okay, so they're both on the same. Let's do a continuous trigger. 
bolts all all the bolts even. All right, let's turn that on. Should be able to see both sine waves. Yeah, excellent. So you can see they're offset by 180 degrees. So and if we had three phases, we can see that as well. And you know the voltages are so similar, but. Uh, Let's just go ahead and switch over to logger mode and just kind of see how that does the exact same thing. So mo, voltage, AC. Go to channel two. Same settings. So we'll start one and start the second one. We'll do fit. So now if we turn that off, we'll see a drop. We can see that on both channels. Turn it back on, we'll see it climb back up. So if you wanted to data log, you know, like I said, you'd, you could be off by a half, half a second or a second on your, you know, line them up. So you're not gonna be lining up uh, sine waves on phases with the data log, but it's not fast enough anyway at a half second. So if you're looking for a, you know, a power loss or gray out or something like that, you can certainly data log uh, each channel and you can see if there's a dip on any one of the channels, you know, over time. <clears throat> you know, we often have to do that. You know, we suspect that they're having power issues at a site and then we have to uh, look for any kind of power loss at a random times. You know, they may have a, a large pump or a, or a motor, air conditioning unit, something like that that's turning on. <clears throat> at a uh, random time and then causing an issue with another piece of equipment you know we can watch for that with this data log over over time so this is uh, pretty useful to have these multi channels the data log feature is probably been the nicest thing that I've been using uh, at my sites to to get duty cycles and things for various uh, equipment you know a heater on off time duty cycle uh, air compressor on off time duty cycle things like that it's been really useful to have pretty useful uh, excited to try to get myself a, another pocket and do some three phase stuff and uh, see what that looks like but uh, based on what i see here this is going to be super useful to have multi-channel capabilities thanks for watching if you got any uh, ideas or thoughts or comments for uh, all the viewers put it in the comments below um, if you're interested in these you know please use our affiliate link below that uh, helps the channel to keep doing videos like this and, and getting more equipment to to uh, demonstrate it and and uh, do some how-to tutorials for you guys so appreciate you using those links and uh, thanks for watching take care